man of the match by the adjudicator Ted Dexter. Ted uh, mentioned that uh, Ian Botham, the greatest all-rounder in the world, was a close contender, but Borders performed all in the place. Uh, not surprising, it seemed very, very doubtful what was going to happen to that ball when it pitched. Came through at a fairly normal height, and uh, Imran Khan has made the breakthrough. Peter Dunning struggling out there for 25 minutes, failed to open his account. And this is the way it ended for him. Just moving sufficiently down the hill to clip the off stump. The first wicket falling down at score on 22. Century up for Somerset, 53 for one, and Richards looking menacing on 18, and the field changes come straight away. Jeff Arnold having bowled six overs, two maidens, no wicket for seven. Great little spell that has given way now to Giles Cheadle. He's bowling left arm around the wicket. Good thinking from Imran there. Richard started off saying no to Brian Rose and then kept on running. Imran came around very quickly. By that time, Rose had turned his back. And Rose is gone. He walked, umpire bird didn't have to bother giving the decision. An extraordinary dismissal because long went back and across outside leg stump took the catch eventually it's about the third attempt and the second wicket is down for 53 very wide outside leg stump just a flick off the edge and it's lodged in the top of the right hand pad and Arnold Long drags it out Brian Rose has gone for 30 caught long bold Cheadle 53 for two, with Viv Richards on 18. Oh, and he's missed it. That's one they might regret. Richards got himself into all sorts of trouble there, trying to force the single away down through mid-on or mid-wicket, and Giles Cheadle could have had him. Handle Long getting away down the leg side there. Couldn't quite gather it in. Richards was well out and scrambling to get back. Glorious shot. Very easy to see where uh, Peter Roebuck has picked that shot up. A real Richard shot there. Tucked away through square leg for four. So he goes on to nine. Total on to 72 for two. That's another pitch. Full toss. And he's caught at mid on. Well, Mendes takes a catch. Peter Roebuck, they're very cross with himself there. Uh, could have hit it almost anywhere, but hold out at mid on. He goes for nine, and Somerset now are 73 for three with young Giles Cheetle striking again. A friendly delivery. And couldn't have placed it better. off the back foot by both of them and uh, no hope at all of story cutting that off. Not the first time that Graham uh, Cheetle has uh, hurt and strayed. Well, that's 
Botham uh, gone for the big one. So that straight and glorious style by Botham. That's the second four he's collected in this over. He's on to nine and the total 89 for three. Ferociously around the square leg by Botham. Six runs. And he gave a perfect illustration there to his partner how to play that sweep shot. Glorious shot, that perfect piece of uh, timing. Going with the in swing and deposited over the ropes at deep square leg. He goes on to 15 now. And he's gone for another big one, and he's middled it. Another glorious six for Ian Botham. He's really come to terms with Graham Cheetle over the last couple of overs. A very, very big six indeed. So his uh, second mighty blow to clear the ropes on the leg side. Out from the end of the line, swinging across. And beautifully connected with the swing there. Two sixes, two fours in uh, Ian Botham's 24 now, made out of 113 for three. And that's slide away by Richards, and it's safely taken. Arnold throws the ball up. He's going to be joined now by his Joyce colleagues because that's the end of Viv Richards, who falls to John Barclay for 44, caught by Arnold, and four wickets are down for Somerset now with a score on 115. Well, a disappointment uh, for the Somerset supporters, but a little shake of the head there by Viv. He was never really in vintage form here this morning. But 44 extremely useful runs. Just a touch here and there of the Richards magic. He may have got caught out by Sini and Botham hit for two huge sixes, and he's tried himself to hit it hard. He's got a top edge there. It's gone very high. It's quite a long boundary down there. And Jeff Farrell has just moved in quite comfortably and taken a very pressurised tense catch quite nicely in the end. There's only a solid run on that slip there. It's beaten the uh, drop story. It's gone through for four. Four streaky runs for Ian Botham. Oh, well, he went into that one. First half volley from Arnold. Powered away through it. Sick cover by Botham. It hasn't wasted any time with anything at all offline. Great shot. Just giving himself a little bit of room there. Parkway's bowling to a predominantly onside field. For the right-hander, Imran will have just the one slip. That's Stuart Story. frustration for the Sussex men the outside edge the brilliant catch and the no ball call from umpire Barry Mayer very thick outside edge it was a good effort by Long to get over but already umpire Mayer's arm is starting to go up great shot that super Everything in the classic mole. What a delightful way to bring up the half century. 53 to Ian Botham. Splendid innings. It's taken only 64 minutes. And that's as good a stroke as we've seen all day. 74 balls for the half century. Six fours and two sixes. Very neatly done. 
picked it up quickly in the background of the crowd and my word he took it well and Barclay has struck again that was a fine piece of feeling by Jeff Arnold thick edge thick marks and Arnold goes away skirting away to his left very quickly and took it neatly good cricket that and it's 151 for five with marks out for four and Ian Botham 53 not out Barclay now to Botham and he'll have to be quick getting back there that's beautifully done by Giles Cheadle Botham was on one knee and couldn't get up and Burgess looking at the ball and not at his partner came charging down from the non-striker's end but a lovely piece of fielding by Cheadle just coming towards his left hand and the sixth Somerset wicket needlessly has gone now at 157 Spencer into both of them he's got underneath it could just about be safe is it Jarvid oh, Mound out for the second time today is that one of the Somerset batsmen off extremely difficult steepler there to judge both of them looking for another six over that square leg area this time off the bone of Spencer. <laughs> Arnold wasn't going to engage in that sort of competition. I think uh, both of them in full flight that uh, Jeff there thought he might have come off the worst. They set off a quick glance there by Arnold and he says, boy, you have it. <laughs> so the field uh, now going back for both of them. That's the delayers. With one exception on the offside, that's uh, Jarvid Neander. The rest push back on the boundary. Oh. That's a no ball. for six into the crowd and that's what Somerset wanted both of them delights them with his third six all come in that same area it wasn't all that short just short of a good length and uh, again it's an illustration of the tremendous power and strength of Ian Botham <laughs> Desperate effort to plunk another this time over the tavern boundary. Sees the end of uh, Ian Botham. He's bowled there by Imran Khan for a brilliant 80. 80 runs, which have seen Somerset through to 194 for seven. And that characteristic effort by Ian Botham ensured that his side finished with a respectable total, if not in fact with an obviously dominant one. 207 for seven was the final score off their allotted 60 overs, and it's interesting that uh, two spinners shared four wickets. John Barclay, off spin, had two for 21 off his 12 overs. The left-hander, Giles Cheetle, had two for 50. So Sussex went into bat, and they got a firm, good start from John Barclay and Mendes. In fact, in the ninth over, they were 29 for no wicket, and here's Botham bowling to Barclay. Greeting. Well, the fifty comes up. For Sussex, and they've done very well to reach that point without loss. saying a moment or two ago that you don't see many bounces in limited over cricket because uh, quite often on good batting tracks they're money for old rope Mendes hardly bothered to move there smashed that away in front of square 
to go to 25. a very thick edge and it brings four runs Barclay's been on the lookout there for anything slightly short of a length and sliced high over the top and the first wicket so Mendes goes, caught by Vic Marks at, uh, so the deepest backward point there, looking to uh, slice him away with a flattish bat on the outside. And the first wicket goes down at 93 with Mendes, caught Marks, Cole Burgess for 44. Well, that's a fine start made by Sussex and indebted to this young Sinhalese cricketer who's quite some really glorious attacking shots. He's looked for runs from the word go has been responsible for seeing Sussex nicely underway with an opening partnership of 93. In the air, and safely held. The second wicket is down. Peter Roebuck has taken the catch at mid-on, 106 for two, and... John Barclay has gone for 44. Final round performance in this match. The bouncer there picking up the wicket for both of them. Never quite inside it. Skied it away to mid on. Roebuck just moves away to take a comfortable catch at mid on. So a double for John Barclay. 44 runs and 2 for 21 in 12 overs. A fine performance. Javid Mirnad gone for naught, and Derek Taylor will probably never take a more important catch than that. Good bowling from Ghana, and now the Somerset supporters give voice. Fine delivery, pitched outside off stump, held up, and Javid had always plays square on, chest on, never really sideways on, just edged it in front of the keeper into his side. He dived and made the superb catch. Botham's in his seventh over. Head. And a no ball was called by umpire Barry Mayer. A bit of gritting of the teeth now. And he's gone. Playing too soon at Botham and Sussex in real strife now. 110 for four. Botham and Garner straight after T have broken through and Somerset supporters now going wild Imran out for three caught and bowled both of them hit on the side of the head by bouncer and then caught and bowled still six wickets in hand for Sussex in this game which has uh, swung one way and the other all day long. I think the odds now are slightly in favour of Sussex. Well, not a very good throw, and they uh, come through in the end quite comfortably for two runs. Two runs, which bring up the 150. 151 for four, so ever nearer. It's always a tricky decision for a fielding captain, this. If you keep your best bowlers up your sleeve for the end, they're certainly the best uh, bowlers to bowl if the, if the pressure is really on. But at the same time, sometimes you can leave them too long in the wings and it gets to a stage where they're not much use. Well, that's four runs from the moment it left the bat. Dropped short by Jennings and packed away square on the leg side. See, these two lads have done pretty well, talking to each other again, gaining confidence. They'll have assessed the situation, know that it's going to be easier to score off people like Jennings and Burgess than it is off Botham and Garner. 
He's nudged a one safely there. And the single bringing uh, the great roar from the crowd. Principally because it brings up the 50 partnership between these two. And what a very valuable partnership this has been. It looked as though the Sussex Indians might collapse until these two came together at 110. But they've played some uh, very heady cricket out there. Shot. That's the time straight. The timing has improved with these two fellows, Parker and Philipson. They're doing the right thing, chatting to one another. That's it. Keep it going. 27 needed now. And there'll be a few raw nerve ends, I should think, in the Sussex dressing room at the moment. Keep your head, Parker's saying. Keep your head. Don't do anything silly. There's a man gone back on the boundary at uh, Deep Square now for Paul Parker. It's an ordinary long leg, and on the or some 15 yards inside the boundary at Deep Square, that's Denning. Oh, great shot. That's the type of stroke the Sussex supporters want to see now. The race away to victory with style. These two young fellas will never forget this partnership. If they happen to be there at the end, it'll be a great moment for them. We're back. Would need someone to back up there. Little panic setting in there, Roebuck's throw was wild. Dredge wasn't backing up, Botham wasn't expecting the throw. And the 200 comes up now, at the same moment as Paul Parker reaches his 50. A splendid performance, and one that follows on a really good effort in the semi-final when Sussex beat Lancashire. back again as the man came in the boundary. Two hundred and two for four. Thirty-two to Philipson, fifty-three to Parker. And the Sussex uh, balcony sheer happiness. about as good as anything we've seen all day. <laughs> Got a conference again there with Flipson urging Parker to be there at the end. But there are some butterflies there at the moment. 206 for four, just two to win. There's one of them. Scores are tied in this 1978 Gillette Cup final. And he's out with the scores tied. Philipson is gone. 
Derek Taylor takes the catch. Philipson caught Taylor, bowled dredge for 32. And what a pity this young fellow couldn't have been there at the end when the winning run was struck. partnership of 97 carried Sussex to victory after they'd lost a couple of quick wickets they lost one just before T. Mendes and then they lost Shavid me and Dad and Imran straight out to the interval just a thick little edge there what a straightforward catch to Derek Taylor. Well, while we wait for this, uh, what should be the last over to start, I think it'll be interesting for Ken Barrington when he comes to decide the man of the match. Uh, my vote will go between Barkley, who bowled very, very well, batted superbly. And I think the boy who's batting now, Paul Parker, was batted terribly well under a lot of pressure. And there it is, the winning run. The ball will go into some little boy's pocket and the players race from the field with victory going to Sussex in this 1978 Gillette Cup final by the margin of five wickets. 211 for five. Stuart Story remained not not out and Paul Parker, 63. A very fine effort. We need a big score from somebody, a Gower or a Botham, to give them any chance of doing so. Well, in cricket, the year got off to a pretty gloomy start with an unofficial and...